Ben, are you gonna do the intro? All right, I'll do it. Welcome to the latest Watercolors Aquarium Gallery video brought to you from the Aquarium Rush Studios in downtown Grand Rapids, Michigan. This is a topic that I thought Ben would never <laughs> let us do, but you know, he's been in a really good mood this week, so we're gonna go ahead and do it. Yeah. Today we're gonna talk about glowfish. Anyway, we're gonna talk a little bit about care of glowfish, but mostly we're just gonna talk a little bit about how cool glowfish are. Ben is actually the one who went over this in the podcast, but we're gonna break it down a little bit here too. Yeah. So, I mean, where to begin? <laughs> <laughs> I guess we need to define exactly what a glowfish is, and then I'm gonna get really techy on this. So the technical class is transgenic organisms, which is a type of genetically modified organism that has genetic code from another organism. So transgenic. Yeah, we get a lot of questions about them. Um, first of all, this isn't a fish that we carry here, but we all, we do kind of like to talk about them. Um, but we get a lot of, no, but aren't those fish injected with something? And in this case, they actually aren't, or at least haven't been for a while. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's actually a pretty common laboratory technique. Uh, in this case, it's actually really fascinating. What I did not realize when I was uh, doing research on this is that the green colored ones, that's actually uh, a green fluorescent protein. Like, I knew that. What I did not realize is that the green fluorescent protein used in laboratories is the same gene around the world. Wow! It's all derived from the same type of jellyfish from the North Atlantic. Like, I didn't know. It was <laughs> like, I just thought they were various genes that basically did the same thing. Nope, it's the same gene. <laughs> so do you know what the other genes come from? Because there's like green, yeah. yellow, pink, orange. They have their own trademark names for those colors, but yeah. those are what they roughly I'm break gonna, down to. I'm gonna list out these colors' actual names. Okay. Just because I was just like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much my reaction to it. <laughs> uh, electric green, sunburst orange, moonrise pink. Ooh. Starfire Red, Cosmic Blue, and Galactic Purple. Um, in doing research for this, aside from the green and the orange, I wasn't able to find specifically where they came from. Mm -hmm. So the yellow is actually a variation of the green fluorescent protein gene, but it comes from a different species of jellyfish. Mm. So um, I can't remember the scientific name, but they're just called sea pansies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then the rest of these, I wasn't able to match up what color with what, mm -hmm. but I was able to find documentation of genes coming from mushroom corals, bubble tip anemones, chalice corals, open brain corals, and dendrons. Wow, that's so cool. So, uh, in case everyone hasn't quite connected the dots here, th this is kind of a complicated topic. Uh, What's happened with these individual, so these are uh, the original species worked with for glowfish are zebra daniels. So for the context of this example, I'm just gonna say zebra daniels. So these are zebra daniels that have had a gene from either a jellyfish or a coral spliced into their DNA to produce that color. They're born with it in so many words, I guess. If but, only it wasn't tacky. Uh, <laughs> I'm more freaked out that it's patented. But yeah. That's the part that really, I don't know, I get a little, like the science is cool, but I get a little iffy once you start patenting living organisms. Yeah, I could agree with that. I mean, it's their right, it's just a weird thing to me. Yeah. <laughs> but there's actually practical purposes for doing stuff like this and techniques like this. So uh, ignoring like agricultural practices. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of usage for transgenic organisms. So glowfish were not originally designed to be pets. They were originally designed to be an indicator of pollutants in an environment, but they could never get the gene to selectively for us. It was only on or it wasn't. And so uh, their backup plan was to just sell it and it became more popular than they anticipated. But glowfish are also kind of popular in laboratory settings. Okay. Because that 
So zebra daniels are a model organism for uh, developmental biology, cancer research, et cetera, et cetera. Having a organism that you can watch develop is really useful, and that like even in just the regular strain, but now you have the option of, well, I have this one that glows too. Yeah. And I also want to expand on, these green fluorescent proteins are so ubiquitous. They're all over the place. Like it's the same gene in axolotls, it's the same gene in like laboratory mice. Uh, if you've ever had like specific types of fluorescent imaging for medical scanning, they're just temporarily injecting you with GFPs. Huh, <laughs> that's interesting. So like, Glowfish were basically just a practice run for a usage of this type of technology. And you know, we don't carry them here. That's not necessarily against the actual ethics of the fish. I think what it really comes down to is, you're never gonna get me behind this glow in the dark tank with nothing in it and like the, the crazy super overnatural looks. But you know, if you put them in a planted tank, that beautiful green and the bright contrast, they look almost as good as a wild type zebra <laughs> Danio. Oh. <laughs> so when it comes to care of these guys, how would you describe them? Um, if we're talking specifically the Danios, it's gonna be pretty much the same as zebra Danios. 10 gallon tank, feed them flake food or whatever else you got around. Um, do water changes. <laughs> They're not gonna be too picky on chemistry. They're not gonna be too picky on food. They should be relatively hardy fish. Um, although I've never been personally caring for them long-term, so I don't know. So goldfish don't just come in the zebra danio variety. Yeah, I think it's- Black skirt tetras? Yeah, black, or are they white skirts? Ah, white skirts are technically just the color variation oh, of black really? skirts. <laughs> I didn't know that. Um, and then they have the rainbow shark one, yep. and they have bettas now too. And tiger barbs. And tiger barbs, oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> so a fish that doesn't need any more selective breeding. <laughs> yeah, I will admit the glowfish tiger barb is a bit much for me just because I, I already have a strong bias against the captive strains of tiger barbs. The wild tiger barbs are way easier to work with. They're actually pretty chill. And then you took the mean version and did something to it, but yeah, generally, they're gonna all be pretty similar care to their non-glow counterparts. The only thing I would think that you would need to watch out for is particularly in those territorial species like the sharks, the barbs, the bettas, I would think that they are a little bit more prone to receiving aggression because of their bright coloration. Other fish are probably gonna look at that and be like, who do you think you are? <laughs> um, but if you're keeping all glow stuff, I don't know if they would know the difference. Yeah. I will admit there is a certain appeal to them where like if you just want to school a fish that all school together and are different colors, glowfish just might be that option. <laughs> That's know? true. If you really do like that confetti of different colors. Because I've had a lot of people be like, man, I wish different species of tetra school together, but they don't. And I'm like, they don't. <laughs> so like, what are you going to do? I guess the best you can do is find the different colors of the same species. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. So Ben. Are we gonna get glow fishing soon? <laughs> he's, he's pondering, he's thinking. In the meantime, you can hear what we had to say about them in the episode of our podcast about um, human engineered fish. Um, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment on this video too. What do you think about glow fish? Do you keep them? Would you never touch them? How do you feel? Let us know. Um, and until then, let's have lots of fun and keep those hands wet.